are you? Hi, I'm Chris. I go to St Luke's Church in Huntington, which is the same church that Sue goes to. I've not done Open the Book recently, uh, but when I'm needed, I'm Sue's stand-in. How long have you lived in Chester? I first moved to Chester when I was 23, which was 24 years ago. I haven't lived in Chester all of that time because for quite a few years I did live overseas. What animal do you think you are most like? I'm going to go for a tortoise or a turtle. They are famous for moving slowly and I like to start slowly thinking about things before getting on and doing things. Ah, but when I do get on and do things, then I'm like a teenage mutant ninja turtle. What is your favourite memory from primary school? At primary school, I wasn't a particularly naughty student, but in reception, I do have a very vivid memory. We were all sat in a circle and we were told by the teacher to keep our feet still. And little rebel that I was, inside my shoes, my toes were wiggling away, and I was thinking, aha, you'll never know. If you could only eat food that was red or food that was green, which would you choose? Oh, this is such a hard question because the red things are all the things that aren't particularly good for you. You know, the red things, nice, but not particularly good for you. And the green things, well, the green things are all sort of the things that are good for you, aren't they? But not necessarily the most tasty. But I'm less of a rebel now than I used to be. So I'm going to go for the things that are good for me and choose the green things. What's the best thing for you about being a Christian? Finally, I've got to the easy questions. The best thing about being a Christian for me is that it makes sense of the world. I said I was a thinker, so I often think about things like, why is it that the world is such a strange mixture of good and amazing things, as well as bad and sometimes painful things? And Christian faith, says God created everything to be good, but it's broken. And it's broken because we have a habit of ignoring God and rebelling. And that kind of makes sense of why our experience of the world is that strange mixture of good and bad things. Tell us a little bit about your favorite Bible story. The story I've chosen is about somebody who is rebelling against God. And God sends an angel to warn him. And what happens is that his donkey that he's riding can see the angel and he can't see the angel. And as a result, he gets cross with his donkey. And you're gonna find out what happens next. Uh, what you need to know though, is that the people who made the film Shrek may have borrowed an idea or two from this Bible story. What is your favorite Bible story? So my favorite Bible story is called Balaam's Donkey. Enjoy. Thanks, Chris. King Balak was worried. He was the king of an area near Jericho and had seen what Joshua and the rest of God's people had done there. He didn't want them taking his land too. So he called his advisors to talk about what they could do to try and stop them. You guys are my wisest advisors and I need your help now more than ever. Certainly, Your Majesty. How can we be of assistance? Well, no doubt you've heard about Jericho. Well, now Joshua and his lot are heading our way. How do we stop them? Oh, Your Majesty, I, I just don't think we can. I've seen the damage for myself. The, the city is in ruin. The walls are smashed to pieces. It's not a good sight, Your Majesty. I don't think we can come against Joshua and his God. What kind of advice is that? I need help, not negativity. Sorry. Uh, there, there is one thing we could try, Your Majesty. There, there is this man, Balaam, and he has strange powers. And when he curses, bad things happen. We could maybe get him to curse God's people. Hmm, interesting. 
I like the sound of that. Go, go find this man Balaam and tell him the king has commanded him to curse Joshua and all his people. Certainly, your majesty. We'll go immediately yes. and find him. We bring greetings from his majesty, King Balak. He asks for your help and will reward you greatly for it. What does he require me to do? Well, he wishes you to come with us and to curse Joshua and his people. Let me sleep on it and I'll give you my answer tomorrow. That night, God spoke to Balaam. Balaam, do not go with those men and do not curse my people, for they are special to me. The next morning, the advisers came to hear Balaam's answer. God has spoken to me and he's told me not to do it. Oh, King Balak will not be happy. He will be very angry. Well, that's not my problem. I must do what God tells me to do. Greetings, Your Majesty. We have news from Balaam. Fantastic. Has he agreed to help? Sadly, no. Um, he says he won't come. Hmm. I know. Tell him I will reward him richly if he comes. That's bound to work. Uh, I don't think he will do it, sir. I don't care what you think. This is what I'm telling you to do. Now go. Yes, yes Your Majesty. Majesty. Oh, it's you again. Do you remember my answer was no? Ah, yes, you did. But we bring a new offer from King Balak. What is it? He wants to reward you richly if you do what he asks. Much gold and silver will be yours. Please do what he wishes. Let me sleep on it and I'll see what God says. Again, that night, God spoke to Balaam. Balaam. This time, go with them towards Joshua, but do not curse my people, for they are special to me. The next morning, the advisers came to hear Balaam's answer. OK, I will go with you. Let us meet later to depart. Great. Marjorie the donkey was having a nice snooze. She was comfy on her bed of hay and dreaming of munching some tasty grass when Balaam called her. Wake up, Marjorie! We're off on a journey! I know it's not what you want, but you can have another nice sleep when we get home. Now, Marjorie was a good donkey, so she slowly got to her feet and trotted off to get ready for the journey. Balaam started riding Marjorie towards where Joshua and his people were camping out. All of a sudden, an angel with a sword appeared, blocking the road. Balaam didn't see it, but Marjorie did and brayed with fear. She was so scared she reared up and Balaam almost fell off. You stupid donkey, what are you doing? Come on, let's keep going. Oh. But they hadn't gone much further when the angel appeared again, blocking the road. Once more, only Marjorie could see it and braid in fear again. Ah! This time she trampled on Balaam's foot. Ah, you stupid donkey, mate. My poor foot. What are you doing? Come on, we've got places to go. But the angel appeared for a third time. And Marjorie just lay down and refused to go any further. Balaam was so annoyed, he hit her with a stick. It was at this point that God gave Marjorie a voice. What are you doing? Why are you me with that stick? Well, you, you've been knocking about three times. That's why. What are you doing knocking about? I'm a good and faithful donkey. Don't you think there's a reason why I'm behaving like this? You've always been a brilliant donkey. That's why I don't understand you behaving like this. Well, look ahead and you'll see the reason why. Balaam looked up and at once saw the angel. He hung his head in shame. Balaam, why have you been beating your donkey? She has done nothing wrong. She saw me and stopped and so you should have trusted her. If you'd have carried on beating her, you would have been in trouble with me. I'm so sorry, Marjorie. I should have had faith in you. Please forgive me. And God, I've made such a mistake. Please forgive me. And I have a message from God. Don't rush ahead and get ahead of yourself. You must remember to do only what I say. When Balaam arrived near Joshua's camp, he found Balak waiting for him. Remember, I needed to curse them. Curse them badly. I can only say what God commands.
commands me to say. To Balak's fury, instead of cursing the people, Balaam spoke a blessing over them. You fool, did you not hear me? I said curse them, not bless them. I can only say what God commands me to. So twice more, Balaam spoke blessings over God's people. Right, give me that. You will not have a single piece of silver or gold from me because you refuse to curse them. I don't care about the money. I can only say and bless people as God wants me to, not curse. That's what God commands from me. So I've come to the zoo today to see if I can find some animals that can talk to me. What do you reckon? So here's the elephant, everyone's favourite. I wonder if these guys are going to talk to me. They seem like they should do. Nice big animals. Maybe if Balaam had had an elephant, he might have ridden on him instead of a donkey. What about this rhino? Do you think he'll talk to me? Hey, this is rhino, that's it. Have you got any words to say to me today? Any messages from God? No? Hmm, he's enjoying his food, but not sure about any words. He's still looking at me though. Do you think he has got something to say? So here's some antelope. Hey antelope. They look very chatty. They do look like they're enjoying the sunshine though. But do you know what? A donkey is very similar to zebras. Hey zebras, have you got anything to say to me today? Seen any angels? No? Hmm. So this is proving to be more difficult than I thought. But do you know what? Can you hear that? Birds. They're always trying to talk to us, aren't they? I wonder what they're saying. Mm. Can you tell what they're saying? So well, here it is. I found the closest to the donkey. It's with the camels. Uh, here's a peeping donkey. And then here's a donkey. Do you think it's going to talk to me today? Mm, we'll find out. So I think we've established that actually animals don't normally talk to us, do they? I've not found any animals in the zoo that want to have a conversation or tell me about an angel that they've seen. So I wonder why it happened in the Bible. Maybe God really wanted to get Balan's attention. I think so. So why did he want to get his attention? Well, he'd been asked to go and curse God's people say horrible things about them so that they would lose the battle. That's what the king thought, didn't he? And actually, that's not what God's about, is it? God's not about being mean and unkind with our words, and he doesn't want us to be like that either. God is about blessing people. He wanted Balaam to bless God's people, to say encouraging and kind words over them. And so using that donkey to speak to him really got his attention and really said, actually, it's not okay that you're gonna curse the people. You need to bless them. And so in our house, I know that when my children start to talk to each other, sometimes we say, mm, is that kind? Is that helpful? Is that encouraging? Is it necessary? And I know my friends have come up with another one and that's a think. So when we're speaking this week, I wanna encourage you to think. So is what you're saying, is it true? So T for true. Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? I like that one. Does it inspire people to do better? Or is it N? Is it necessary? Do you need to say what you're gonna say? Sometimes we might say, oh, well, it's true. But actually, is it necessary for that person? Does it encourage them? Does it inspire them? And then K, is it kind? So is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? Is it kind? That's what we wanna do with our words this week, isn't it? We don't wanna be like Balaam, who was gonna curse God's people. We wanna be what he was at the end. He was kind and he blessed him. And that's what God says to us. He is always kind. He is always loving. He is always encouraging. And even when we make mistakes, he still wants to encourage us. He says, you can do it. You can do better next time. So this week, why don't you think when you're speaking? So God, we thank you for your amazing creation that we can see. Thank you for animals and that they are great. And we pray that this week we would think as we speak.